folks. Backyard Brawl Week, but I'm sure you are knew it. And we already have the quarterback matchup, folks. It's going to be JT Daniels against Keaton Slovis, USC versus USC, former USC quarterbacks in the Backyard Brawl. We're going to talk about that, the mystique of the Backyard Brawl in Morgantown, and all that much more with Mike Osti from West Virginia Sports Now on this episode of Locked on Pit. You are Locked On Pit, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Pit Podcast, everybody. As always, I'm your host, Nick Fairbairn. I'm joined by Mike Asti from West Virginia Sports Now. Worked with him a lot at Steelers Now. He's now down in Morgantown out there doing great stuff over there at West Virginia Sports Now. Mike, welcome to the show, man. Appreciate you coming on. Absolutely, man. Always uh, glad to do this for you. And yeah, we've done a lot over the years together here in our, our recent careers. So happy to be aboard, still amongst the, the Sports Now family. And you couldn't ask for a better start to a football season than the rebirth of the backyard bro. Yeah, you really could. It's a it's a fun time, I think, for yeah. both fan bases. For Pitt, obviously, coming off that ACC championship season and jumping right into a historic rivalry renewal. renewal. And then you look at West right. Virginia, maybe not having the expectations that they have won and under head coach Neil Brown. But certainly, if there's a team that could maybe turn it around, maybe it's this one, right? Maybe. Yeah. And if it was going to happen, it was going to happen based on the offseason that Neil Brown had. So this is year four for Neil Brown, generally speaking, in today's day and age, especially in college football at a major conference level. Year four, you really got to put up or shut up. And many coaches don't even get to year four. So the wins have not been enough. 17 and 18 to this point for Neil Brown. Just not enough. Just, just simply not enough. There haven't really been enough big wins. There have been some bad losses. A win over Tech last year you could point to as the big win before this. But a win over Pitt in the rebirth of the backyard brawl, it's been a decade on the road in Pittsburgh, would be by far the biggest win for Neil Brown. So that's different than him and Narduzzi. Narduzzi obviously has big wins. Not the case for Neil Brown. But for Neil Brown to be able to save his tenure – and to have that big win and turn things around this year, he had to do a couple things. Number one, he had to fix the quarterback position. Jared Daggy and Neil Brown have divorced. They've known each other for over a decade. In fact, longer than that, Neil Brown knew Jared Daggy's older brother from the tech days, and they had a personal relationship. And I'm sure that that played into him being a WVU and him transferring there and then him giving him so much rope there. And the yards were there, but the offense just didn't score enough. Too many mistakes there. We've seen Jared Deggie's life after WVU, and it's nothing that he's too probably thrilled about. And that's now a relationship that is over. But if you're going to divorce Jared Deggie, because that was a conversation, if you're divorcing Jared Deggie and basically telling him you're best to transfer to finish out your college life, you have to upgrade the position. And that goes to your lead-in of JT Daniels. So a top recruit out of high school was at USC, was performing there, got hurt, some drama over the injury, got replaced. Then he's at Georgia, started off winning, got hurt, fell out of favor. They go win a freaking national championship without him. And now he's trying to save his career as well. And another guy trying to kind of save things is Graham Harrell, who comes aboard. So you fix the QB position, you upgrade there, you're figuring to upgrade there with a former top recruit who a lot of talent, even though not enough games for him to really impress so far in his career. And then you bring in an offensive coordinator in Graham Harrell, who comes over bringing the air raid in, and you, Neil Brown, take the humble pie of giving up the keys to the offense to Graham Harold, who is the young offensive guru like you were at Troy. You give Graham Harold the offense. You bring in the air raid. You have JT Daniels. There's other pieces there, but you also lost a lot to the transfer portal and other places, even though you've also added. So it won't be easy for West Virginia. It's a hard schedule coming up, not even just Pitt. But after Pitt, you have a couple easy games with Towson and Towson and Kansas. You start the season at home, by the way, after Pitt against Kansas. But then it's... Virginia Tech on the road, and tons of ranked teams. So it won't be easy, but Neil Brown did what he had to do this offseason and upgraded 
the offense and the QB position who have a chance to turn this around this year. Yeah, JT Daniels is the key of that. And you, you there's a lot of parallels here between Pitt and West Virginia in that regard. Yeah. QB OC yeah, yeah. change, right? Mark right. Whipple to Frank Signetti, Kenny Pickett to Keaton Slovis, obviously under vastly different circumstances on those two accounts. Kenny Pickett went to the NFL and was a first round draft pick. <laughs> right. And Pat Narduzzi right. essentially pushed Mark Whipple out. And obviously that yeah. certainly has its drama to it. But JT Daniels and Graham Harrell are coming in and are very interesting pairing when you look at who's on the other side of the football in Keaton Slovis. I just find that very funny because Slovis and Harold know each other's tendencies probably better than anyone else. And then yeah. Daniels fits into that equation very similarly too in that regard. But he looked pretty good when he played at Georgia. Like JT Daniels <laughs> looks good when he plays. He's just been injured a lot, and he looks like a guy that could give Pitt some serious threats down the field. You know that Pat Narduzzi defense allows explosive plays because they play cover zero on every single down, and you look at JT Daniels, too, that top-rated recruit. Keaton Slovis, no, he went to USC and was phenomenal his freshman year, but look at the recruiting profile. It's a three-star, lowly-rated three-star with yeah. offers from USC, Hawaii, NC State, New Mexico State, Oregon State, San Jose State, SMU, and then you have a bevy of FCS teams after that. That's not a like sterling offer sheet. So it's, it's a fun parallel to me to have Keaton Slovis and JT Daniels in this game and then try to put the pieces of the puzzle together to think about how these guys are going to play at Pitt and West Virginia. Because I think yeah. Slovis has the, the guys around him to be really solid. JT Daniels, I think, is going to have to do a lot more of the carrying than Slovis will have to Rob Probably, and another key for JT Daniels having success, and you mentioned all the injuries, what do you need when you have a quarterback with talent that gets hurt a lot? An offensive line. What's been West Virginia's problem last year? Offensive line. Everyone can complain about Jared Deggie, and Jared Deggie was not good enough for the high level of football that West Virginia was re was requiring, especially when you go and see Neil Brown's offense at prior stops, and then West Virginia can't put points on the board unless it's LIU. And you see the turnovers, you, you do see the yards, but they couldn't they couldn't get the ball in the end zone. So Jared Deggie wasn't enough for the program, but the offensive line also wasn't nearly good enough. And it's not even just the QB position that it was an issue. Letty Brown, two years ago, was a darling of college football, came out of nowhere, emerged. The NFL was really looking at him. People thought first, second, in terms of Letty Brown could really make a name for himself. He ends up not getting drafted, trying to do something with the Chargers. And that was the dip from two years ago to last year. Yards per carry dipped. And that's, that's offensive line, too. He didn't have a great year, but that's the offensive line, too. So the O-line has to be better. But West Virginia, like Pitt, lose another kind of parallel comparison. West Virginia loses Winston Wright. They lose their top receiver, whereas Pitt lost Jordan Addison. Little different circumstance as well. <laughs> the Blitnikoff winner and transferring off of that drama. But it's going to require JT Daniels playing well, but being healthy, the O-line playing well. That's definitely necessary in the air raid. It's also going to require somebody emerging at running back because – all they have is Tony Mathis and Johnson and a few others. It's going to be probably by committee, but Mathis basically was Brown's backup, and he's going to be the guy now because other transfers and things with Dixon just didn't work out. So that's going to be what West Virginia is rolling the dice on now as running back. And then you have Bryce Ford Wheaton, who's been a good receiver, but he needs to go to another level maybe if this program wants to win more. And I do think one thing Pitt fans should look at and West Virginia fans should look at and what you're going to see throughout this season, it'll be interesting to see how much you see of it in week one, is the air raid's going to involve more than what West Virginia is used to. I actually talked with Reese Smith at camp, and he kind of dropped a bomb and let us know that he was considering transferring out and told Neil Brown, I'm not happy with just a special team role. I got to get involved more now. And then Neil Brown tipped him off and said, just so you know, Graham Harrell's coming aboard. And then he told him, I'm going to be your Wes Welker. No problems. No more problems. We don't have any more issues. That's big words. But that is a spot in the Graham Harrell air raid offense that could be there. You could see a lot more from a slot receiver. You could see a lot more receivers in general involved. And that's why JT Daniels is clearly the guy for West Virginia to lead them somewhere. He can involve everybody. But it's about the offensive line. And if they can't protect, 
somebody might, else might get an opportunity at QB in week five because JT could get hurt again. I'll knock on wood, but that's kind of been his story. That could certainly happen. And I want to keep talking about this a little bit, folks. But first, I'm going to let you know about BetOnline because BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including the MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf, and so much more. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, podcasts. They have you covered on all fronts. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action happening right now. BetOnline, where the game starts. Welcome back to the Locked on Pit podcast, everybody. And speaking of BetOnline, that line right now is Pit 7.5 on BetOnline. So if you want to put that money down on whether it would be Pit. Yeah. Or West Virginia to cover. I know what I would bet on that, but I'll talk about that more on Thursday later in the week because I think this is actually a really interesting game. But you brought up some of these receivers because yeah. if they, if they're if if this is going to be a game, JT Daniels and his receivers have to be really good. Right. And you talked about Bryce Ford Wheaton. Sam James is there too. And, and sure. you have you know, Sam James could be a bit of an of an issue for Pitt. But something that Pitt always had issues with last year was those guys in the slot because Pat Narduzzi does not play nickel. He plays base all the time. It's always four DBs <laughs> unless they play the Delta package. And that's right. going to be interesting. If they play the Delta package, what's going to happen? So I'm very interested to see Narduzzi against the, the air raid, especially against a guy like JT Daniels, Mike, because – Listen, yeah. they just don't face the air raid very often in the ACC. And last time they did, Mason Rudolph and James Washington put 320 yards on their head. <laughs> and, and Pitt, as a program, is familiar with the air raid. Going back to the last time the backyard brawl was played, Geno Smith ran the air raid out of West Virginia. And West Virginia put tons of points on the board. You're talking about 70 points in, in an Orange Bowl against Clemson right before they got their dynasty started. So... West Virginia fans have seen the air raid really, really work. I think the one advantage Pitt will have, Nick, is – and it's cool for fans, for media, for even the players, and for college football in general to have this game be week one to kick off the year national television. That's a big deal. It's much better than throwing in week four or five, Thursday night too. However, for both teams on the field, maybe not the best. Graham Harrell, for example, he might not be thrilled with this being week one. I'm not even sure if Narduzzi scheming against the air raids thrilled about this being week one. You might actually see better football if this was week five or six, because it could be that it takes a while for both sets of coaches to kind of feel each other out. There's no familiarity. They haven't coached against each other before. System-wise, they haven't really dealt with each other before. And it could be you have a first quarter or so that is boring. Fans are rowdy, but no big plays yet. And both teams are kind of scared to to unleash too much, or you're seeing a lot of three and outs, et cetera. And then maybe a big play opens up and say a Reese Smith or a Sam James in the slot curls out and they get maybe one yards after the catch and they break it. And then all of a sudden, Arduzzi has to change a game plan. And all of a sudden, Graham Harrell figures something out. Or maybe they catch him with a big play. Or even reverse for Pitt, if they're going to try to maybe spread out their offense and do more with the running game than last year. And can West Virginia's defensive line with, with, with Dante Stills, who is still there? He is still there. He was supposed to be gone two years ago. So he is still there. Can he cause some, some havoc and actually put some pressure on Pitt? Or even West Virginia defensively, it's pretty much Charles Woods and a bunch of transfers and, and, and kind of no names. Can they actually cause some splash plays and create some turnovers on their own, or will it be too hard against Slobus and Pitt's offensive passing game? A lot of questions, obviously, for this matchup, but a lot of that may not be answered for a while into this game, whereas maybe if these teams had games, had practices, could watch some tape. Like if Narduzzi could watch West Virginia against Virginia Tech, an ACC opponent, prior to this game running the same offense, that would be better for Pitt. But instead... Virginia Tech is going to be able to scheme against West Virginia a few weeks later by watching the pit tape. So that's the only negative, I guess, of this being week one. That's the only negative. But because it's week one, I think it right. adds to the mystique of it. And I want to transition yeah. from some football stuff into that because I know right now on Pitt's campus, there's a certain type of buzz I haven't felt since Penn State was still okay. a thing with Pitt. 
right. that's the type of buzz you're feeling right now. We've got some weird at we, you know, we got some weird uh like certain phrases that are being said on campus right now <laughs> by students, you know, college students being college students. Um, so we got some like really fun college football things happening, right? Yeah. But you could just feel kind of the excitement and the the feel of a big game rivalry. And this is why college football is great to me, is these regional rivalries. Because Pitt West Virginia feels less like a it's technically an out of state rivalry, but this feels like an in state rivalry. I mean they're an hour and a half apart from right. each other. So these are regional schools that are very close to each other. What's it feeling like in Morgantown right now? Because I know in Oakland yeah. it's getting pretty crazy. Yeah. So so when I when I've been in Morgantown, it's the same type of feel. And Neil Brown actually talked about this when he appeared on ESPN in terms of you're here in Sweet Caroline a lot, but you're hearing some interruptions with some lyric changes from West Virginia fans and what they say in the middle of that song. And I can tell you all through football camp, I know that Country Roads was played the other day before Pitt's practice. West Virginia's been playing Sweet Caroline for months during their practices, even in the locker room, I could hear it walking around even after practice is over. They're playing in the locker room while they're changing clothes. I, I, I don't know why, really, but they just want it in their mind. And the fans, I know this, for example, too, being an alum, a lot of friends, a lot of alums coming from far places for a week one game. That's not happening if they're if they're playing a, 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 a no name school or a non a non really rival. And I also think the one maybe thing that West Virginia has that makes their fans even more into this game than maybe even Pitt fans are is Pitt has the Penn State rivalry and they did bring that back years ago, even though it's in doubt for the future. They are entrenched in the ACC. They kind of have developed a little thing with Clemson. They were little brother for a while. They got over them last year. Maybe that's something. Miami might be something. Nothing's like playing the backyard bra, obviously, but there's some little rivals that they're developing there. West Virginia fans, even though they are in the Big 12, they've had success there. They had to be there. They would have been left out, and who knows the future if they ever get in the same conference or are welcome in the ACC in the future. But a lot of West Virginia fans feel like West Virginia does not have a rival otherwise. There are no real true Big 12 rivals. The only one that I think fans hate is Oklahoma, who's leaving the conference, and they never have beaten them, even though they've been close games. It's kind of hard to have Oklahoma be your rival. That, that, that's just going to be negative for you most of the time. And travel, mileage, proximity, it's harder for West Virginia fans to even get to games because how far the travel sometimes is go to the basketball side. Bob Huggins complains about it all the time. So this is a close rival. You mentioned it 70 miles separating them and Nick to compare it to Pitt versus Penn state Pitt, West Virginia. I know that Penn state is in state. So maybe some Pitt fans hate Penn state more. That would be closer. You can get to Morgantown way easier than you can Going to going to Happy Valley. We're talking a couple more hours to get to Penn State in comparison to you. So any Pitt fans talking about maybe do I go to the game next year? You're driving seventy. You're basically driving seventy miles on I seventy nine South straight the whole time, and you're there. It's not a hard trip at all, and you have a lot. The players have talked about this to us too. West Virginia players, if they want to go out in the summer or for a weekend when there's not a game, they go to the South Side. They go to the same bars. They shop in the same places. Certain places, if you live in certain suburbs, like where I live in Pittsburgh, it's even less than an hour to get down to Morgantown. So it's there. That, that proximity is a big deal and is part of this. And, and Nick, I think you also got to hand it, and I've said this in other shows, that with all the college football chaos and realignment, and it's all about money, we all know that. But think about this. This rivalry is great for college football. You have SEC guys having Neil Brown on their national show to discuss the backyard brawl. This game does not impact that conference at all, but they're interested in it. And that shows you how big of a deal it is when it's the 105th meeting. And you have a situation here where these two teams aren't in the same conference. And when you have natural rivals that are not in the same conference anymore throughout college football, We've lost some of those rivals, Miami and Florida. I, I know Oklahoma and Nebraska are now playing again, but it took a lot of arguing to get that game back. A lot of those natural historic rivals, or even when they're in the same state, 
you have one program saying, I'm not going to play it unless you come to my place two years in a row, or I got to get a bigger share of the money, or we've been better than you, so we're not going to do it unless you agree to these different circumstances. It's been it's been issues, and you go, yeah, Pitt fans know all about it with Penn State over the years. Shane Lyons and Heather Like, West Virginia and Pitt, whether it be basketball with Bob Huggins and Jeff Capel now, or Pat Narduzzi and Neil Brown, they made a point once they were no longer in the same conference and once they all were established to get together and constantly talk, I know this to be a fact, and basically say, we want this game, we want this rivalry back, what do we got to do to make this happen? They're, they're not trying to have their egos involved, we'll play at your place, you play at our place, we're going to switch the series around when they come back years from now, and we'll, we'll do it more in West Virginia. What do we got to do? We want to play this. So I think fans got to really be happy with both programs because without both programs, this game would probably not be happening, to be honest. Yeah, I think that's very realistic. And and it also speaks to the want of this rivalry. Right. Um, because that Pitt-Penn State rivalry, it's a real rivalry, but it's almost been soured by – a unwillingness to not play it. You know yeah, what I mean? Penn like, State fans on Twitter all the time are saying, we shouldn't play you, it just hurts us. I mean, yeah, and, and you, Joe Paterno and the coaching like, staff. Like, right. It's not even just that. It's 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 the, it's the it's the fact that at a fundamental level, the, you know, the department in Penn State does not want to play that game. Yeah, James Franklin um, doesn't want to play it anymore so, either. He's carrying the Joe Paterno torch. Exactly. Right. He doesn't want to play it. Frankly, I'm not sure Pat Narduzzi wants to play it. At this point, I think he's soured from it. Yeah, Yeah, I I don't think he wants to play it. So that rivalry doesn't feel like it's coming back for a while. These these teams want to play so much they extended it. Right. (laughs) It's going to be happening again. Yeah. And Neil Brown said the other day, we want to play this as often as we can. Now, he did mention that I don't know if West Virginia is always going to play Pitt and Virginia Tech both in the same year, both on the road. So that West Virginia might have got a little screwed with this schedule right now. So I don't know if you're going to see both games all the time. But yeah, they want to play it. And if they didn't want to play it, it wouldn't be happening because you only have so many out-of-conference games to fit in. And to be fair, even though Pitt's in a better situation coming off last year, they are both risking this. I mean, Pitt is risking. This is not going to be an easy start to the year to defend what they had last year with a new system, a new QB. Pitt loses this. They're basically out of the playoff conversation because this is an unranked West Virginia team. And they're 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 putting that on the line in week one. You got to give tip your cap for that. It didn't, didn't have to happen. It didn't, especially when you look at the next team on Pitt's schedule. Right. Yeah. It's not it's gonna even be a ranked Tennessee team coming to town. Yeah. Um, and that's a real good Tennessee team. But what yeah. Pitt has done in that fact is that if they come out to we're not in both those games, they're gonna be a top ten. Um, so sure. they, they're gonna be Could right happen. in that picture. Yeah. Um so Pitt has a high risk. That high reward type of move here, but it's worth it for this rivalry because yeah. rivalries are so key in college football to me. Um, and and Pitt, Pitt Penn State is is another rivalry I, th- I think should happen. Um, I think West Virginia Virginia Tech's an, another one that should happen a lot. But Pitt West Virginia, there's no reason that should not be happening as much as it possibly can. And, yeah. and you know, unlike West Virginia, Pitt has made some inroads on you know getting ACC rivals. Um, it's supposed right. to be Syracuse. Obviously, Syracuse isn't good enough, but that's like their protected rivalry. But Pitt's starting to develop, you know, a little good rivalry here with Virginia Tech and and UNC. Those right. games are always good. Even Miami, like that's a far away kind of rivalry. But Pitt and Miami have had to duke it out. Uh, in yeah, I'd so, say that. Yeah. So like that, Pitt has natural animosity with teams. I don't necessarily feel that as much with West Virginia uh, in the Big 12. So it's really now. good to see like these teams just meshing together and everything about it. You know, I, I can't wait to see what the tailgates are like on Thursday. I, I can't wait to see all the crazy fan signs we're going to see at college game day. Look how many former yeah. players are showing up. Lewis Reddick said it perfectly. It's a five-star list of former players for both programs that are going to be at this game. Again, do you think Pat McAfee and how busy that man is is going to come to, to Hackershire Stadium uh, in Pittsburgh, even though his family's from there and still living there? If it's not a big game or or even going to come to Morgantown, he, he's not been at every West Virginia game. Pat, if it's not a big game, that's big. Here's the thing. Pat McAfee, I don't know if you guys know this. If, you, if yeah. you're not into wrestling at all, you don't know this. They have a pay-per-view on Saturday in Wales. Like, he is staying in the United yeah. States an extra night 
and then flying to the UK. Like <laughs> right, that's right. What's happening right now. Right, like, right. That's the type of robber we have here. Now for Pitt, Kenny Pickett's going to be there. That's an obvious one. That's a little easier, right? Yeah, right. Easier. that's a little he easier. Lives. But Dan wants that's the honorary captain. Shady yeah. McCoy is yeah. going to be there. You're going to probably have Aaron Donald there, even though he's yeah. got everything with the Rams. Like you have all these guys. Yeah. And Pac Man Jones is going to be there. Yep. Pac Man Jones, he's going to be there for West Virginia yep. as well. So yeah, like there. And, and and here's the other thing that I think is really interesting. And I talked. I, I'll, I'll drop. I know Rasheed Marshall is going to be there. He has a Pittsburgh mm-hmm. connection and a WVU. He. We, we do a show together. He's going to be there. I, I don't know for sure if Steve Slayton, uh, I would imagine Owen Smith's going to be there because he's not that far away. There are just so many. Yeah, and, and I think what's also good is, and we've been touching on this, but those former players, that era, the coaches, everyone, they know about the rivalry. Not one player from either one of these teams has played in this rivalry. And current students at either one of these schools, they haven't experienced the rivalry. So Neil Brown, Pat Narduzzi, and all these former players, and we can say this is what the rivalry is. To experience it is different, and now they're going to actually be able to experience it. Absolutely. And that experience is going to be crazy. And I'll say this that's even bigger is that there has been a whole generation of players in Pittsburgh, essentially. Yeah. You know, the whippy old players that have not experienced that. Yeah. And these are two of the biggest local, like local factories for schools, right? Like uh, major D1 prospects in the Pittsburgh area are always going to consider Penn State, Pitt, and West Virginia. Like, yeah, they're always going to consider that. And they have the taste of Pitt, Penn State, but they don't have this back- backyard brawl. And we know if you look at some of the visitor lists that are going to be in town, at the backyard brawl, in terms of the Whippeal prospects, we're talking Quentin yeah. Martin. We're talking Rodney Gallagher is probably yeah. going to be there. Um, we are talking big names, Anthony Specka. Like these are big 2024, 20, 25 Tequai Hayes. Like yeah. big prospects in the Whippeal area are going to be there. Cameron Lindsay, Pete Gonzalez, like all these guys that are really highly rated recruits that obviously Pitt and, Pitt and West Virginia are trying to jockey for. And Rodney Gallagher is obviously going to be. A West Virginia commit. And yeah. so that's something Pitt definitely, definitely wants to win this game because they want Whitfield kids to take notice of that. Right. And they want to get the Whitfield kids in. And Pitt even has some recruits coming in from out of state, like Lamar Seymour. He's he's a commit for them from Miami. <laughs> so, I mean, th- there are yeah. a lot of kids coming in here. Now, obviously, Hakeem Williams ain't coming in. And he's, if you don't know, West Virginia fans, he is the big five-star wide receiver Pitt is in for and it's not just show. He's legitimately considering Pitt, but he's going to be watching. It's just so huge. And that I wonder if Noel big. Devine's bringing his son because his son visited Morgantown about a month ago. And obviously, Noel Devine, a former Mountaineer, I, I, I don't know that to be a fact, but I wonder if he's bringing his son because that could be something as well. And with the way the transfer portal works these days, and obviously there's going to be new rules and windows and things like that, but... Yeah, Rodney Gallagher is big into West Virginia. You look at his Twitter, look at his sister. They're putting up graphics. Pitt could try to flip him. I I mean, nothing is out of the question (laughs) based on college football these days. So, yes, it's big for many respects. You got a sold-out stadium as well. That's not every day. Uh, I know West Virginia fans like to take credit for that, possibly, for helping Pitt out in that regard. But it's just having game day there, it just – everything you could want from this game is there. Maybe it would be a little better if it was a situation where West Virginia was coming in as equal as they kind of have been over the years, but they're a little bit further down than Pitt off coming off of the great year last year, West Virginia trying to build to that, but bringing in JT Daniels is part of that fix. And you're even going to have, you're actually going to have the West coast is going to really care about an East coast rivalry as well with Slovis and JT end up going at each other. There's USC fans who are going to care about this because we might also finally have a little bit of our answer of who is better between the two of them. They've been paired up against each other for four or five years. They, they're they not hating each other. They're kind of friends. But there might be a little bit of a personal rivalry that I want to outplay you. I want to beat you. Graham Harrell and Keaton, Slo- Keaton Slovis might, might have a little bit on, on Graham Harrell. I'm sure I'll shoot him a text after the game saying, hey, I was your guy years ago. Now he's your guy. This is why I should have still been your guy. Like, yeah. you're not better off with him. I'm still the better guy for you in that offense. It, it's All that. Been, like, it, every angle you look at this from, it's going to be yeah. great. It's great yeah. that these teams are playing. The atmosphere around it's great. Right. The atmosphere at the stadium, at Akersher Stadium, is going to be insane. I going to be bananas. Yeah, like, 
like I'm I'm the I'm certain that you know you saw Pitt towards the end of last year when they started winning get more and more fans to come out like that Clemson game was crazy electric yeah. for Pitt right but now you you put probably a similar amount of Pitt fans in there so you get a really good cachet of Pitt fans and then you just cachet it in there with West Virginia fans and folks you have a Pittsburgh rivalry here between two really 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 historic programs and so I, I keep saying this this is what college football is supposed to be about not that you know whatever the expansion is with the big 10 and the sec you understand why it's happening yeah. but these regional rivalries they, they got to be protected in this and this is why usc brought ucla with <laughs> like right this is yeah. why like this is why usc said we're going but you better bring ucla with you and, and Notre Dame is like, well, whatever conference we want to get in yeah. needs to have like Stanford and all these this, other this, is, this is why maybe Pitt, and I said this before actually, this is why in all the conference chaos, and we don't know what will happen even a year from now, let alone 10 years from now, but this is why that if West Virginia is ever dangling out there and they want to get out of the Big 12 or the Big 12 is not a super conference anymore and say the ACC is in a better situation than the Big 12 – Maybe, maybe, maybe Pitt should remember this and play in this because a lot of the situation of getting the ACC the way it is now is, for example, Virginia and Virginia Tech partnered together. They're rivals. They partnered and basically were like, you got to get both of us if you want one of us. Maybe, you know, the TV market, I get it. It's all Pittsburgh. So West Virginia's coverage is the same. That kind of was a nick on West Virginia 10 years ago. I already got Pittsburgh as a media market. I don't need WU as well with Pitt. But di- there's a lot of things different now in terms of money. Look at the overall athletic program, eyeball subscribers, what it'll do. You'll see what having West Virginia will do and having the fan base will do for the eyeballs and for the interest of a conference by this game. So if, if, if W needs a partner, so they're not left out in the dust, maybe, maybe Pitt can remember this and, and try to say, bring West Virginia with us, because imagine if you had this every year in conference and then West Virginia, all these rivals that Pitt has in the ACC, West Virginia had back in the day when they were in the big East, this is that, this really is that old big East feel that we know why college football is the way it is now. It probably will never be that again. West Virginia and Pitt will probably always be in separate conferences if I had to bet money. But for one day, you get the old Big East feel again, and and for generations, and that's just cool. I mean, both everyone's a winner in that respect, even though only one team and fan base is actually going to win on the field. And it's one of those rivalries that still has that competitive feel to it. You know, it's not a Georgia Tech Georgia, um, which has that right. regional feel, but Georgia's just so much better. Even at this point, Clemson, South Carolina is a pretty lopsided type no, of rivalry. 100%, 100%. Like it's one of those rivalries at this point that anything can happen in. We've seen it happen. Like obviously the big game that everyone will point to when you say anything can happen is 13 to 9. Like that's sure. the big game. But right. West Virginia's done the same to pit teams in the past. Like, don't forget that. Like West Virginia has up. They got a winning streak of the yeah. in this rival. They did. Yeah. And yeah, but yeah. you look at it since 2000, right? West Virginia's only up seven to five. It's a very competitive rivalry historically. Like yeah. it, I think it's 33 32 to two since World War II. That is the record. This is an almost about as even of a rivalry as you can have in the in the postmodern age. It is literally yeah. a super competitive rivalry. Now, this year we'll see Pitt. Definitely on paper looks like the the better team for sure, but it's a rivalry and and it's a rivalry where anything could happen is proven. Anything can happen. I think that's what makes the magic of Pitt West Virginia so good. I'm so happy the backyard brawl is back. Mike, man, thanks for coming on. Tell me where they can find your stuff, follow you, read it, everything. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's a lot going on here at Mike Osti 11. So at Mike ASTI 11 on Twitter, everything is linked there. Of course, I do come at it from WV Sports Now, a part of our Sports Now family. And to promote the Sports Now group here, imagine this. We're going to I would I would question any other overall outlet to be able to do more coverage combined for this one event. So think of what we're going to be able to share and be able to do. WV Sports Now for the West Virginia fans, of course, Pittsburgh Sports Now for the Pitt fans. You can also find me several different media spots all, all, all throughout the region, et cetera, on different shows, sometimes on the fan, PXI, been with the Trib over the years. Believe The Believe Network I'm now a part of with my show Mike Drop. So a lot of a lot of names over there that I'm now now a part of. So I'm always happy to be, be, be with you, Nick. And 
be able to talk brawl. I mean, again, we knew about it. You hear about it. I've experienced before, but be able to actually talk about it and have it go somewhere. Like we can discuss the brawl and this this historical relevance of the rivalry, but if they're not going to play, it does lose some luster. Really? It it has lost a little luster. I'll admit that it's all getting it back now because you're actually going to see it on the field. And that is the very most important thing. And yeah, historically there, there kind of has been that evenness. And I think really that's why this spread has gone all the way down from 17, 14 to what seven right now. That's because there either are some Pitt fans scared or some West Virginia fans getting excited that saying, okay, this is a game that maybe could be closer than maybe what it should be. And it just has everything you want. It's a Super Bowl atmosphere for week one. There's not going to be hype for any other game for either one of these teams unless they're playing for a championship probably the rest of the year. That's the only thing, maybe a peak now. But you've got a backyard brawl week one to kick off a college football season. It's on a Thursday night, too. That, that's an extra bit to this. It's on a Thursday night. That's what you really remember about Pitt, West Virginia. It, well, it, for a long time, it was always on Thursday. It's on Thursday again. They're giving it the showcase. So let's try to have these two teams take it and run with it. And I think I, I want a good game. Honestly, I do want a good game. I do think it'll be sluggish early on, though. We will certainly see if it is. If you care about the men's soccer back here, bro, which is happening right now at Ambrose Urbanic Field, pitch just went up 1-0. Um, so early in that game, obviously, but watch that. That's a ranked <laughs> matchup as well. Well, Mike, thanks for coming on, man. Great stuff yeah, as really. always. And as we end it here, as always, this is a pit podcast after all. Hail to pit.